Yep, I know exactly what's going through your head. What in God's name do you have on your bench? <laughs> well, it's a... Well, I, I guess you could say it's rare. I'm going to say it's... it's, And I don't want to say it's unique, because there's other a few other ones out there kind of like this, but it's definitely something you don't see anymore nowadays. Um, and they're just... They have coolness factor, because they're, they're vintage, and you just don't see stuff like this anymore. So what this is, is a Clarion... Uh, CB radio, but it's a remote mount radio. So the main heart of the radio is right here. Now I have the uh, RF shield off of the uh, PLL circuit in here. So you can take a look in there. You can see here's the, the PLL area. Uh, uses a UPD 861, which is actually very similar to the UPD 858. It's in the same family, um, it is expandable. Um, now this is a 23 channel radio, so that makes this radio an, a very, I guess you could say, early, or it's early or late, depending how you look at it. It's a very early PLL synthesized radio, and by the same token, it's a very late 23-channel radio. Uh, P, they did not start using single-chip PLLs. When I say single-chip, I mean uh, where one chip does it all. Uh, the few radios that had PLL circuits... Before they started using one chip wonders like this, had could have a dozen or more ICs that comp, you know, all of those combined made up the PLL, you know, what this one chip does. But uh, so in any case, but it has a uh, kind of unique in that it has two audio amplifiers. So it has one in here. The only thing this one does is amplify for transmit modulation. That's it. The other audio amplifier is in the guess you could call it remote mount head. So there's one in here. And this is the actual one that the audio signal for receive comes out of this box through the cable here into this, and then it amplifies it and sends it to the speaker. One thing that's really cool about this is it uses your existing stereo system in your car. Uh, now, I have this hooked up to customer asked if I just stick a speaker jack on one set of wires there, so you can just plug in a normal speaker using one of its eighth-inch plugs. But you can use this with your car stereo speaker, so you're literally stereo, you know, dual speaker system. And that's why it has all of these other wires. That's why it's really busy on the back end here. There's a lot of crap, all kinds of plugs and connectors and stuff you can see is not hooked up to anything. So what you would do is, is take your, the speaker output from your car stereo, you would route it in through this wiring here. So I actually have that hooked up now just to go up here through the iHome up here, which I have in uh, radio right now, uh, the output of that comes into my receive switcher here. And I just have the phone jack on the front of that. That's the BNC cable. Comes down around the back here. And then I just have clips on here run into one set of the, the input jack. So if I turn the volume up, down here so you can actually see me doing it. <laughs> so turn the volume up. The idea behind this is, so you could set your radio to channel 19, or whatever channel you want, you know, up to 23, um, turn the squelch up and listen to your stereo system. And the instant somebody breaks squelch, because the, the audio from your car stereo system is routed into this box, there's a relay in here that that audio goes through. And one set of contacts goes to this, the other set of contacts go to the audio amplifier that's built into this to amplify the you know, incoming demodulated signal. So, But it, it uses the squelch circuit to control that relay. So turn it up here. So there's the CB radio, and if I turn the squelch up... So, you know, that's really nice. You know, there's no need. That's one thing that actually does suck about CB radios is if you got a CB radio and you're listening to the stereo, you're battling for volume. You know, you turn the squelch up, but then, oh, Christ, somebody starts to talk. Now I've got to turn the volume down on my stereo system so I can hear what they're saying. Well, with something like this, you don't have to do that. As soon as a receiving signal comes in, it squelches, it squelches your stereo system because the speakers in the in the car are then hooked up through the output from this box. 
So it squelches your car stereo system, lets you hear this, the incoming signal. If it's something, somebody you want to talk to, then you would talk to them with the microphone. Again, when you're transmitting, it squelches the, your car stereo audio. So actually... So you can see when it switches into transmit... You can see that it actually again, switches that relay, turning off your car stereo. So that's actually really nice. I wish somebody would make something like that again. <laughs> now, this could be converted into 40 channel. Um, yeah. I mean, you could do a switch mod. Don't get me wrong. The PLL chip in here, very simple. Just basically a little bit of pin manipulation like you do with any other channel mod on a PLL synthesized radio. But you have to remember this is old school. It's got a mechanical rotary dial here, so it's not an LED display. Um, I guess if you were so inclined, you'd have to get a BCD uh, channel selector switch, because uh, this is a this PLL chip uses BCD type programming. Uh, so you would need a B, uh, basically a 40 channel channel selector out of any radio that had used either that chip or like a UPD 858. But you, it would need to be small enough to fit in this box, but basically that's what you could do. Remove the existing channel selector switch in this, stick a 40 channel BCD style channel selector switch in here. You would have to probably add one wire to this wiring harness here. Um, yeah, because pin 7, I believe, I'd have to pull the schematic. I think it's pin 7. It's held low, uh, continuously. And that's not done through here. They just have it grounded inside the, uh, the main transceiver chassis. But, uh, yes, you know, this is a new old stock radio. So, yeah, it's, it's literally, it doesn't get, doesn't get any nicer. Um, customer got this grab them here. So here's the, the box for the, the small remote head here. So it's actually a two-piece unit, um, but obviously it won't work <laughs> without both pieces. So there's actually two part numbers. The RCJ001 is this little module down here, and then the JC201E is the actual transceiver unit over there. Um, now, when this was sent in, uh, it did not have transmit power. Uh, it was dead. So first thing I did was, of course, the first thing I do for anything from this customer is recap the radio. It's old. Obviously, it's 23 channels, so you know it's from the 1970s. Uh, so all the electrolytic capacitors were replaced. Um, he had said that one of the pins was, was pushed out inside the original plug on this, and he also wants an extension cord made. I can't, could not find an exact duplicate of the plug that was used in this thing. It's a 20-pin 20, 20 plug. I could not find a modern replacement for that thing to make up, because that was something that was available with this as an option, was an extension cord. So you just disconnect these two, you know, you stick this little tiny box up underneath your dashboard, and then you basically, you can put that in a trunk, or under your seat, or wherever, but you get cord of, you know, uh, an extension cord that goes in between these. Um, which is fine. There's no RF energy in this cord. The only thing in here is your microphone audio, um, your receive audio that comes out of this after it's demodulated, comes into this box to then be amplified, and the uh, <coughs> the power is attached at this box, so the power comes through this, through the heavy red wire right there, and you have the basically the programming for the PLL chip, so the all the wires that go to the uh, channel selector switch. And there's a little bit of other switching circuitry in there for the relays and whatnot. But like I say, you could uh, get an extension cord. So what I ended up doing was is I just took two basically off-the-shelf modern Moloch style connectors. So there's a 12 and a 9 pin here, plug here. Standard, everybody has these things nowadays. They can be found, if, if you still have a radio shack in your town, you can still get these plugs in, in any radio shack. But, uh, so that way it just makes up making, now what I need to, before I actually make up the extension cord, what I want to do is, is actually, uh, send this back to the customer. If he wants to stick it in a vehicle, uh, get me a measurement would be the best idea for doing something like this. Because I'm going to be, it's not going to be like when you would have bought it from them back then. It just comes all pretty, already pre-made. 
what I can do for him since I'm going to be custom making that extension cable is he can basically just you know hold this up underneath the dash and go okay this wire is going to end right about here figure out where he wants to stick the main transceiver unit uh, like if he wants to put it in the trunk of a vehicle and then just take a measurement you run a string just like you would the actual wiring harness and he can get me an almost exact length and then I can make that cord the exact right length so there's no loops in it like this. You won't have to ball up a bunch of wire anywhere. You know, you don't want it, don't get me wrong, you don't want it stretched banjo string tight, but, you know, I can custom make it to the exact right length. Um, and not only that, the, the shorter it is, the less expensive it's going to be, because I'm going to have, there's two, there are two coax cables in here because you are running audio through this, so you have, uh, this one right here is the audio for the, uh, uh, your received audio, so the audio, the demodulated audio that comes out of the transceiver into the remote head here to be amplified for the speakers, and then this other coax cable here, it's actually three wires, has a shield, and then uh, your microphone audio, and then the other, the other wire doesn't need to be shielded, but that's the push-to-talk line, but uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll get with him, and he can uh, get me a, get me a close measurement so I know exactly how long to make this thing but uh, and the no new transmit problem in this was the relay so this actually has three relays there's actually two two relays inside of here one for the audio and then one for other switching but this is the uh, the main relay like any old radio that uses relay switching you would s this would be a common the way this one's set up so it switches the voltages to either the receiver circuitry or the transmit circuitry and that's all what just dirty contacts. This thing's brand new. It's been sitting in the box since the 70s. You know, the contacts are usually silver plated. Well, they're going to oxidize and uh, you know, they haven't made contact because of course the transmit contacts are going to be apart <laughs> when the radio's off. So, yeah, they've had plenty of time over what 30 to 40 years to oxidize up. So, I got them cleaned up and it transmits just fine now. Um so there you go. I just thought I'd show this really quick. Like I say, it's it's not like it's the, the world's greatest radio, but man, I, I really wish somebody would make something like this again. Um, that That's, like I say, it's just so nice that you can... Exclusively on 1057 The X. You can listen to your car stereo, and when something breaks squelch, the CB radio turns on. <laughs> so, radio manufacturers, if you're listening, hint, hint. As soon as I hit stop, I realized there was something else I wanted to say because <laughs> I know somebody's going to ask me, "Why does this this radio, this transceiver, look so weird? What's all this bracketry?" Well, that's not part of the radio. <laughs> Remember, I was troubleshooting this and I had to do an alignment on it. Uh, now, this isn't a standard radio. It's got a flange around it. You know, here's the cover, the top and bottom covers for it, uh, but it has this mounting flange with the screw holes where you'd screw it down to wherever you're actually going to stick this thing. But because it's not a standard radio, I can't stand it up on its edge. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's basically a knife edge. The two flanges there. So I needed a way to be able to work on this. This is a this is a is actually a fixture that's designed for working on printed circuit boards. And it just happens to have, since it has these two flanges, it works very conveniently also for working on stuff like this. But it's a uh, actually let me lift it up so it's straighten it out some. So when I was troubleshooting this, I needed to get, you know, take voltage measurements up here. Well, that's easy. I could lay it flat on the bench. But when I needed to get voltage measurements off of, like, the relay, some of the other components in here, and actually trace my missing voltages to the driver and the final transistor, I needed to take measurements from the underside. And save of just flopping this thing back and forth on the bench, I can just stick it in this fixture and lock it in at 90 degrees. Or just pop the antenna connector off there. You know, or just flip it upside down. So there's the underside. But yeah, that's all it is. It's just a, a printed circuit board holder. has a nice, real heavy cast iron base to it. But uh, it really makes working on stuff like this very easy. <laughs> and I actually use this when I recapped it. Because, again, you need to be able to be pulling the capacitors out from one side and desoldering on the other side. So the radio needs to be setting upright like this. So yeah, this this fixture, this uh, printed circuit board holding jig works really, really well for uh, working on stuff like this. Um, they're not cheap, but you can get them on eBay used occasionally. So you know, if you're interested in something like that, just look for it. PCB clamp or vice. 
you know, use your imagination because it, it's hard to tell how somebody might list something like this on eBay. Um, I actually got this one brand new old stock off of eBay. Got it really cheap because they had it listed very poorly. But, uh, yeah, they're, most of the people you'll see sell these, like I say, they'll call it a circuit board vice or a circuit board clamp, PCB vice, clamp, holding fixture, or something like that. So, I just, like I say, just wanted to really quick show you what that was. Before somebody asked me, <laughs> I'll save you having to ask. <laughs>